one year of the Arab Spring. Will the new freedom last? In the interview, the Tunisian Foreign Minister Rafik Ben Abdesalem. Foreign Minister, how do you rate the relations between Tunisia, Germany and the European Union? What are you looking for from the German government? How can it support Tunisia's transition to democracy? Relations between Germany and Tunisia are on the right path. We're grateful that the German government has backed us from the beginning. Shortly after the revolution, the German foreign minister visited Tunisia, and again after the October elections and the formation of a new government. Guido Westerwelle was one of the first politicians to visit Tunisia, and we sensed the German government's firm desire to strengthen relations at all levels, especially economic ties. The German economy is growing, and Germany is an economic force not only in Europe but worldwide. We're aiming for close relations with Germany in all areas. Speaking of economic aid, are you happy with the assistance to Tunisia that's materialized so far? Big pledges were made at the last G8 summit. The pledges made at the G8 summit in Deauville were significant. But as a matter of fact, so far we haven't seen any meaningful aid from the G8 countries. We're still waiting for them to follow through. As far as Germany is concerned, I can say that relations are on the right path. We've signed a letter of intent on a partnership providing Tunisia with around 30 million euros a year in both 2012 and 2013. The money is to go primarily towards education and training. We'd also like to see more cooperation in the technology and energy sectors. We both have the common goal of expanding business ties, and that can only be in both countries' interest. The democratic transition in Tunisia is progressing well. But could the poor economy and high unemployment endanger this process? We hope it won't, even though the economy and politics are closely linked. You can't have political success without improving economic conditions. We have serious economic problems, which have been made worse by the crises in recent years. But one of our problems was also the lack of freedom and transparency and widespread corruption. Our government is committed to doing away with these handicaps and stimulating the economy. The government we now have is the result of free elections and the country is stable. There's no unrest and hardly any violence. Things are better than we could have ever expected. We've just gone through a revolution, and everyone knows revolutions bring chaos and changes. It takes time to restore order and stability. What we've accomplished in Tunisia is remarkable. In the space of a year, we've organized free and fair elections and put together a government of national unity. I think our country is on the right path. I'm very optimistic. You belong to the moderate Islamist party in Nahta, which won the election. Germany and the EU congratulated you after the formation of the new Tunisian government. But there are fears that the radical Islamists, the Salafists, are gaining influence. And your government has been accused of going too easy on the Salafists. Recently, there were attacks against journalists. How do you, as a member of an Islamist party, plan to deal with religious intolerance in Tunisia? I think the power of the Salafists has been overestimated. The Salafists are not a major political power in Tunisia. The issue is that there are smaller groups of young people who are being influenced by foreign media. The Salafists in Tunisia enjoy no broad support across society and are barely part of political life. I believe that democracy is the best weapon in the fight against right and left-wing extremism. We don't want to make the same mistakes as the Ben Ali government. It used violence to staunch the flow of social or ideological currents they didn't like. The Salafists may be a marginal group in Tunisia, but we have to grant them their place in our democracy, as long 
long as they remain non-violent. The government intends to defend the liberty of all citizens, as well as freedom of the press. This is our job and we are responsible for it as the freely elected government. Our legitimacy rests on adhering to democratic principles. We've taken on the duty to observe the rules of democracy, like participation, transparency and human rights. We will contain all radical forces from the right and the left through democratic means. And we're hoping that Tunisian people will provide broad support for this. The Arab Spring began in Tunisia and then spread to other Arab countries, like Libya and Egypt. How do you rate your relations to these two countries? Is there a particular connection after the revolutions? We'll be boosting cooperation with Egypt and Libya for strategic reasons. The events of last year showed that Arab countries are closely tied together. What began as a small uprising in Tunisia quickly transformed into a major Arab revolution in Libya, Egypt, Syria and Yemen. It shows us that we need to develop and strengthen our relations, relations with all Arab countries, on the political and economic levels. Our government is very aware of just how important these relations are, for the good of our countries as well as our region. Does the security situation in Libya and Egypt not cause you worry? You have a border with Libya. Naturally, we're very concerned about Libya. Our border with the country is very long. Negative events in Libya will influence things in Tunisia and vice versa. That's why we intend to reinforce relations with each other. The situation in Egypt remains tense, but I'm optimistic as far as this country is concerned. There were elections there recently and the newly elected parliament has started work. It's just a question of time before the situation in Egypt stabilizes. A new government will be formed and it'll face up to the political and economic challenges. But some sort of toll must be paid for democratic processes. There can be no major changes without sacrifices. What do you make of the situation in Syria now? The situation there is worrying. We've recalled our ambassador from Damascus. On top of this, we were the first Arab government to expel the Syrian ambassador from the country. Some said we went too far. But our moral duty to our Syrian brothers spurred us in this direction. Tunisia is the country where the Arab Spring was awakened, and Tunisia was the first country to break off relations with the Syrian regime. We wanted to make clear to everyone that we would speak out against violence and for human rights. Does that mean that it won't be long before you recognize the Syrian National Council? Not necessarily. The expulsion of the ambassador is one thing and the recognition of the Syrian National Council is another. We're calling for our Syrian brothers to engage in a dialogue with each other. Tunisia has offered to host talks. The Syrian opposition need to agree on a common position, then we'll be able to talk about recognition. Tunisia and other Arab countries are ready to recognize any any group that's formed from a national dialogue among Syrians. Let's return to North Africa. At the moment, a lot of meetings are being organized and we're seeing that the countries in the region are attempting to inject new life into the Maghreb Union. In your opinion, is this possible in the Maghreb countries, where democracy is at different stages of development? We're optimistic and are constantly in touch with the governments of the Maghreb. Straight after the formation of our new government, we visited Libya together with the Tunisian president. We discussed with the Libyan leadership how we could advance the Maghreb states. And so we'll also be traveling to Algeria, Morocco and Mauritania in this connection. We want to put the idea of a union of Maghreb states into action. And we're definitely getting the sense that this is a collective desire of all the states in North Africa. We're looking towards closer cooperation, and we intend to boost trade with each other, reduce barriers for workers, investors and trading partners. It's in the interest of all Maghreb countries and will positively influence our economies. At the moment, you and Tunisia are working on a new constitution, and preparations are underway for the next elections. What sort of time frame are we looking at? 
Our government has set itself a deadline of one year to a year and a half. We'll stick to this time frame. The new government has the job of drafting a new constitution and laying the political foundations for the new Tunisia, as well as improving living conditions for the Tunisian people. This is one of the top priorities of our government, in order to stabilize the country, improve the economic situation, and firmly consolidate politics in post-revolutionary Tunisia. Foreign Minister, at the outset you said that every revolution needs time to achieve its goals and to firmly anchor democracy. This is in no way an easy task. From a foreign policy standpoint, what are the biggest challenges facing your country? As far as foreign policy is concerned, the biggest challenge is, of course, strengthening cooperation with our neighbors. It's absolutely vital for us that the barriers between our economies are done away with. Tunisia is a small country with some 12 million people, but the whole Maghreb has more than 100 million people. This is a very big market, and we need to keep that in focus. At the same time, we're making an effort for rapprochement with our European neighbors. Tunisia is a diverse Mediterranean country. Good relations with Europe are very important. We do 80% of our trade with the European Union. So on the one hand, we're working towards a special partnership with the EU, and on the other, we intend to develop cooperation with the other Maghreb states. On top of this, we want to strengthen the presence of Tunisia in the Arab world and in Africa too. This was something that was neglected for many years. Our job is to change this now, to breathe new life into Tunisian politics. Foreign Minister Rafik Ben Abdel Salem, many thanks for talking to DW. Thank you.